I now invite the congregation to please stand for the gospel reading. The gospel for this, the seventh Sunday after the Epiphany, is found in Luke chapter 6, beginning with the 27th verse. Jesus said, But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, and pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also, and from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you, and if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies, do good, and lend expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High. For he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. For a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure which you get back. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. You may be seated. How many of you have followed the Olympics this last week or so? Raise your hand if you would. Please raise your hand if you did, because uh, I know NBC is sure hoping that some people did, and not very many people did, from what I understand. Uh, this is one of the lowest uh, viewerships that they've had for the Olympics, and I don't know, here in North Dakota, maybe you think we should be all about the Winter Olympics, but I don't know, this last couple of weeks hasn't been beautiful weather for us. Maybe we don't want to think about snow and cold. But even if you didn't watch the Winter Olympics, you heard some of the news, certainly in the midst of our news cycle, was a skater. You know those skaters, the extreme confidence they have, the tremendous grace out on the ice. Those are certainly words that you find a Russian figure skater that has been in the news for the last part of the Olympics. And I'm not even going to mention her name because right now she's having a hard time. In the midst of a world in which Russian tanks are massed along the border to Ukraine, it was easy to think back to my childhood when I thought of Russia as, remember a couple weeks ago we did the Facebook, thumbs up or thumbs down on Russia. How many of you grew up with thinking of Russia as the enemy, right? One of my favorite movies, Top Gun, who's the enemy? The Russians, right? And so it might be just too easy to imagine a 15-year-old girl being the symbol of the enemy, and of course the Olympics have been used over the years to try to make political points, and that's kind of sad for the athletes and sad for the world that we try to use something like that to make political points, but at the end of the day, the controversy over the skater who had been reported to have taken some sort of performance enhancing, in this case, heart medication, it didn't really matter because what happened? I was tuning in uh, some time. I hadn't watched the Olympics a lot, and I turned it on, and there's the skater doing her routine, and she fell uncharacteristically several times. She just it kind of just slipped away from her, and she certainly wasn't ready. She, the, the, all the stress and everything had gotten to her, and so I have to tell you, though, she was in fourth place, she wasn't even on the medal stand, so it didn't matter. The other athletes got their medal ceremony. But I'm afraid that I was probably one of the, one of the people who initially their thought was like, oh, bummer, well, 
Cheaters never win. Not proud of myself for being a little bit smug, but when she fell, my arrogance was practiced a little bit. This young woman on the brink of the greatest achievement of her life had made an error that would cost her an Olympic medal, but she kept going and she finished her routine. And in the end, I felt a little, little damp spot forming for myself as she, this ice skating machine got up, smiled a fake smile, raised her hands up and received the applause. It wasn't until she walked off the ice and waited in the little waiting room with her coaches that were not particularly compassionate to her that I really realized, holy cow, this isn't right. And her tears began to fall in front of the world. We don't know what she was thinking. We don't know if she was innocent of cheating. But at that moment, I saw, and I hope the world saw, a human being. Someone that faces the same struggles and sees the same joys and sorrows as all the rest of us. Some of the haters were probably thinking or maybe even shouting at their TV screens. How could she? Serves her right. Look at her now. Who does she think that she is? But our gospel lesson for today says, Love your enemy. What does that mean? Well, it means that we should feel bad when somebody falls, when anybody falls. In fact, humanity started with the fall. We call it the great fall, Adam and Eve in the garden, the fall into sin. In our gospel lesson today, we hear Jesus say that we should love others, even love our enemy. And what does that mean? We certainly don't want to be like the people who are at the foot of the cross, looking up at Jesus and mocking him by saying, he got what he deserved, or even one of the other criminals hanging there with him, also dying. Maybe some of the other fellow skaters saying, with great cynicism, yeah, if you're so great, then why don't you save us? Even God looked down on the cross and said someone had to pay the price. And the person who had to pay that price was Jesus. Jesus lived up to his words about loving the enemy, and he died for the enemies of God. Who are the enemies of God? All of us. St. Paul says in Romans, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All of us as sinners are in need of redemption. The same Jesus is the one who said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they're doing. Later on in our reading, we hear Jesus tell us not to judge. I had to look this up. I don't watch skating a lot, but apparently there are nine judges. I remember, though, that back in the day that whenever an American skater skated, Russians were crossed off because they gave them a low score, and Americans gave them a super high score, and that's their job, right? They're supposed to judge, but that's not our job. But certainly millions of people have been judging this young woman, this 15-year-old, and let's be honest, do 15-year-olds always make the very best decisions in their lives? Probably not. There's probably a little bit of blame to go around. In a time, we'll probably find out more. The reality is that in the case of sin, that we often don't know the whole story, and the reason often goes a lot deeper. So maybe a simple question might be, what would cause them to cheat when they were on top of their game? I mean, they were going to get first, second, and third. From a faith perspective, the answer to that question is very simple. Sinfulness, greed, wanting to build a cushion, 
trying to deal with that immense pressure of being world-class athlete and just trying to, to take a breath. It's likely the same thing that caused members of the U.S. Olympic medal-winning cycling team to cheat. It's the same thing that caused King David, the greatest king, to fail in his own way. I mean, David was on top of his game. He was the greatest king. He was a military leader. He was even a psalm writer. He wrote half the psalms that we read here in church. But his eyes wandered. He desired another woman that he saw from on top of his palace. And he cheated in a different way. And then he killed the husband of the woman that he cheated with. So let's work the math there, confirmation students. Started with number 10, covet. And then it turned into number 6, committing adultery. And then it ended with number 5, which is... See how it all stacks up? See how sinfulness builds? Yeah, sin begins in the heart, and we want something so bad that we do just about anything to get it, and that's where we get this idea of coveting. Maybe those should be the first two commandments. Coveting is usually where it starts. You know, it's probably easy to look at cheaters with disdain, especially cheaters that we know could beat us without even cheating. Those people with supernatural strength and balance or intelligence, but they wanted something more. There's something deeper, a system that keeps demanding more and more from our athletes. And I'm not just talking about Olympic athletes, I'm talking about athletes from when they're this tall. We keep asking so much, and sometimes we just lose the love of the game. Jesus said, Pray for your enemy. And who is our enemy? Well, often due to sin, our enemy is the one that greets us every morning in that mirror. Sometimes it seems easy to look over there and say, well, look what they're doing. That's a worse sin than what I'm doing. But that mirror is still there, isn't it? It doesn't change what we've done or who we are. It doesn't change the fact that we've failed God and failed ourselves. And even in those times of great despair, when we want to point fingers elsewhere, we know we're the only one that we can control. And it's only when we admit our sin and ask for forgiveness and commit to practicing and proving ourselves with God's direction that we can make things better. And I pray that in time, this young woman will continue skating. She's one of the best in the world. But in that moment when she had to hold her poise, when people were shouting things at the television, throwing out cheap shots, I'm sure somebody said, yeah, how's that feel, loser? And she could have looked through that TV screen, she could have said, I don't know, person that's sitting in your boxer briefs with Cheeto stains on your shirt, you tell me. The reality is we all have something we can improve We've all had our moments when we felt alone and lost. Terry Lipinski said, the loneliest place is right on the center ice before you begin your program. I don't think it's the same, but sometimes coming up to preach before a bunch of people gives you a little gulp. I wanted to share in closing, though, from my vast knowledge about figure skating. <laughs> I think I could fill a little golden book with that. Just three observations. Number one, when you fall down, when you wipe out, dust yourself off. Keep moving forward. Dwelling on the past for too long has never been good for anyone, but it doesn't mean we shouldn't 
look in the rearview mirror once in a while and realize, hey, I made a mistake. How do I keep from making that mistake again? Number two, we need to see that other people are affected by our actions. Even when we're feeling owly and growly, even when we're feeling angry and don't want anyone around us, our actions have consequences because there are teammates, there are other people around us, our family, our friends, and they see us and they hurt for us. It was sad to see the gold medalist and the silver medalist standing up there in the midst of what must have felt like a hollow victory. All the drama had sucked all the joy out of that moment, and it was sad. So we need to remember, even when we're feeling down, when we feel like, well, nobody cares about me, I'm not hurting anybody, sometimes there are people watching us, right? Our family, our children, our friends, especially those youngest ones, people who think the world of us are thinking about us, and so then we're never truly alone. Finally, no matter how many times we have fallen or how far we are, have fallen, we are never too far from God. Remember, this is the God who came down to find us. The God who will not leave us alone or forsake us. God has given us the gift of grace, and we who were once the enemies of God can now welcome our former enemies as friends in Christ. On this day, let's think of a lost and a broken 15-year-old from Russia. But let's also remember that there is abundant grace and newness of life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. At this time, let us receive God's offer.